Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. It's the season of MP3 players. <laughs> I'm excited because I love dedicated portable MP3 players. Like one of my favorite things on earth. And here we have a new model from a company called Mechen. Mechen? Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, I've reviewed one of their MP3 players in the past and I was actually pleasantly surprised by it. This is a higher end model. Uh, this, just to let you know, was provided for uh, for free for the purposes of review, uh, but I'm receiving no other compensation, and all my opinions are my own. Anywho, uh, this model in particular is uh, currently priced at $99.99, but there is a 10% off, so basically this is $90 bucks right now as of the time of filming. And uh, so far from the box, uh, you can see this is the model H11, and yeah... I, I believe this is sort of, you know, has all the normal bells and whistles. Uh, we'll get into this in a second. But yeah, basically a Android MP3 player that has a uh, micro SD card slot. It, you can install apps. I believe this one has uh, the Google Play Store support, or at the very least allows you to install your own apps. We'll actually get to that in a second. And once I uh, can actually take a look at the uh, the manual and whatnot, then we can get right into it. Uh, but looking at the specs, this is the 80 gig model because it's, I believe, 16 gigs internal and then a 64 gig card. So a micro SD card. So if you add that up, that's 80 gigs. It has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, you know, Android app support for like Sp Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, etc., etc. Five inch full touch screen. Uh, runs Android 9.0, and yeah, there you go. You can see the semblance looks just like a smartphone. These are basically smartphones for parents who want to get their kids a not smartphone, but still like a smartphone-like device to like listen to music and whatnot, maybe watch some videos like YouTube videos, uh, or people who are just totally not tech inclined. You want to get this for an older relative who doesn't know how to set stuff up. You can set this up quite easily for them, and then they'll just have like a full, you know, 80 gig kind of touchscreen MP3 player. User manual, front and center. Uh, I just saw something about Google Play, was it? Yeah, it does support Google Play, so huge thumbs up on that. That is that is a big thing that a lot of people ask about. Because if you don't have the Google Play, even if you can sideload apps, there's a lot of apps that require Google Play services. And if the store isn't installed, you're not getting those services. So even if you can boot the app, it won't work properly. YouTube is the big one. Uh, other than that, yeah, we could see here the display is actually higher resolution a lot of these five inch displays are like 854 by 480 this is 1080 by 1920 ips that's going to be something to see so that'll make video playback a lot nicer has a bluetooth 4.1 screen density is 160 dpi which is like i just said pretty high a dual band wi-fi so 2.4 and 5 gig uh, that's pretty good all the supported file formats it's android and uh yeah it says runtime is about four hours. Oh, charging time is four hours for a full charge. The battery is 2,500 milliamp hours. Hopefully this, we can get above 20 hours. I think that's like the sweet spot for like really useful and good for me. Uh, let's see. Got German. <laughs> uh, seven pages of English. Okay. So there we go. We have accessories. Very nice presentation. I will say. And we got the player itself. Ooh, shiny. So we have a case. Yes. So a lot of these, like, third-party, you know, non, like, massive company MP3 players usually don't come with their own cases, and it's impossible to find them because they're they're pretty niche. This one comes with its own case, which is really nice. And it's one of these like TPU molded ones and it has like the little tiny dots inside. Uh, yeah, these are generally really nice cases. I actually do use uh, use these. I have on their lower end model came with a case too. That was really nice and I still lives in its case. We have cheap Maraca earbuds, which I'm never going to use. So I'm just going to throw that over there. We do have a USB-C, thank God. 
uh, cable that it comes with, which is like about two feet long. So like decently long, I can always use USB-C cables. Glad to see that they're not using an older USB standard. And last but certainly not least, a spare uh, screen protector. That's always really useful. Uh, these are the plastic type. They're not glass, clearly. But uh, they do the job. They will uh, take a little bit of abuse before they start getting scuffed up. But uh, yeah. And let's pull this out. I can already feel this is pretty hefty. Uh, because this is made of glass and I'm guessing anodized aluminum. Feels really nice in the hand. Yeah, this is on the slightly larger side size when it comes to these uh, these portal MP3 players. But I will say the uh, the screen to body ratio is significantly higher, at least along the top and sides. Uh, there's barely any bezel. It's the bottom. There's a bit of a chin, but yeah, it looks very nice. It looks just like a smartphone. And you've got really nice chamfered edges. It's uh, matte, and then you have like a gloss chamfer. And the back, it's cold. I just uh, pulled it from outside so uh, but yeah you can see you have volume up volume down there's a hole which I'm gonna guess is maybe reset there's the power button on the bottom we have one headphone jack the micro SD card slot a mic hole we have USB-C and your speaker output nothing on the other side nothing on the top so I guess ASMR time let's uh, pull this screen protector off that was very satisfying so it comes with the screen protector on the front comes with one already on the back and you get a third one for free so if anything happens to either front or back you can slam a uh, new screen protector on there yeah so let's uh see the fitment in the case now what's interesting is this has a hole for a camera no camera here I will say, though, on these MP3 players, whenever they have a camera, the camera's always crap. So in my eyes, they're better off not including the camera and just having a slightly bigger battery. That's the right way to go. So uh, definitely happy to see there is no actual camera on here. Not that I would ever use it. And oh, before I turn it on, let's just see what size uh, micro SD card. It should be 64 gigs. And it says 64. I'm going to guess gigs, not megabytes or anything crazy like that. And I will say, I do appreciate, let's get the card put in the right way around. That was the right way around. So the card fits in mostly flush. There's like maybe a tiny little bit that it sticks out. And it's not quite straight, huh? Yeah, it's slightly crooked. But yeah, once you get the case on, it'll take up the slack. So, case fits nice and tight. That's pretty good. There is a uh, hole, two holes for a lanyard, and you have your holes for accessing everything but the card. The card does not poke out or anything, so it is protected from like dust and whatnot, accidentally popping it out. Let's see if this turns on. This was sitting, oh wow, okay, turning it on. So another issue that I'm on the lookout for is uh, the screen. I want it to be plenty bright. I'm just realizing I might actually have to set this up. So you might have to give me a second. Okay, so that took me like a minute or so. Oh. <laughs> so I just uh, signed into Wi-Fi and also logged into my, my uh, Google Play services, whatever, so I can access the Play Store. And so far, it seems pretty decently snappy i'm the really true test of that is once i start installing my own apps i'm gonna need to transfer a bunch of stuff to the sd card so that's gonna take a little while uh tap to set up sd card i can oh yeah i i got gotcha. you i'm just gonna use it as portable storage i still want to have the internal storage in here and that should just give me yeah there we go now i'm on uh yeah 62.51 gigs on the micro sd card and then I got everything internal. Seems decently snappy so far. And uh, the screen resolution is noticeably higher than uh, pretty much every model that I've looked at so far. Uh, because this is, like I said, it's a 1080p panel. And it says it's an IPS. And looking at, if I turn off the actual 
overhead lights. Yeah, looking at the uh, the viewing angles, I'm pretty sure it is 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 uh, very likely an IPS panel. So it looks fantastic. Let's just see. This is only half brightness. Let's see if I bump it up all the way. Doesn't get super bright, I will say. If I turn uh, these lights up. Okay, I get it. I get it. So if yeah, if we turn it up, it's viewable with this light that I have on. It might be an issue in direct bright sunlight, but it looks perfectly viewable under my uh, desk lamp here. Yeah, it's making me run an update to Google Play services to actually use it. Uh, it's like a 50 megabyte file. It's not super fast. Yeah, but uh, it's doing it. Let's just see how long it takes to install this. 41 meg app update. I mean, scrolling is, it's a little bit laggy. It's actually doing the installation right now. So that's why it's lagging because it's giving priority to the app installation. Uh, but yeah, so they're, they're decent. They're okay. Uh, I wouldn't, these generally don't like run modern games like super well or anything. So I wouldn't get this to play games. I'll get this just for media consumption pretty much. So let's see what we got. We got Play Store, Radio Mobi, Bluetooth, Gboard, Hybe Music, whatever the default media player app is, File Browser, Settings, Sound Record, Clock, Gallery, Calendar, YouTube Music, Apple Music, Amazon Music, AIMP, which is a like a media player software, kind of like VLC, Spotify, Audible, Deezer, Tidal, uh, Chrome, Facebook, Read Era. I don't know why you'd ever want to read on this, but I'm sure it would work just fine as an e-reader. Kindle, and that's it. Got two pages. We have no app drawer, at least, yeah. All, I don't know why all of these disable the app drawer, so you can't just pull up and like search for apps. It would have been nice to have that, but eh. And uh, yeah, these are the pinned uh, quick, settings that you got and if I just go to settings so we do have three gigs of RAM so that's a little more than on average these mp3 players have they usually max out at around like two gigs uh, three is on the higher end and I've yet to see one that actually has like four or more uh, Battery, it's saying uh, should last till 11, 94% already. So it actually came decently full. I will want it to show percentage, of course. And storage, yeah, it's using 8.55 gigs of the internal 16 gigs. Uh, yeah, like it said though, you could actually adopt, if you plug in a you know larger micro SD card, you can adopt it as internal storage. Uh, which some people do, so then you can install apps and everything to it. I like to keep that as external portable storage so that if anything happens to the card, you don't lose the entire OS. Uh, if you have a card that's adopted as internal, if the card corrupts or anything bad happens, like the card dies, then all everything that you've installed onto it goes with it, and you basically have to, I believe you had to like reset up Android on the device uh, because everything important was stored on the card at that point. So I like just having two separate memory pools. That's fine for me. I don't usually install a lot of apps on these guys. System, let's see if we can uh, maybe make it to... Uh, apparently it's saying it has eight cores. Uh, let's see if we can... One of these you can usually unlock developer note mode. There you go. So if you tap model, uh, you can get into the developer mode. And there we go. We have developer options now. And usually in here, we can actually just like Bluetooth settings. That's why I like gaining a uh, developer mode. Oh, you can have USB settings. There you go. So I can change the codec, for instance, if I want a higher uh, fidelity mode like LDAC or um, aptX. You can do that now if you enable developer mode. So that's definitely good to see that they kept that in. Some of the some of the uh, the portable MP3 uh, manufacturers will disable that or make it so you can't access that developer mode. So it's definitely good to see that. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is I have a lot of media to transfer to this. 
And I got a lot of listening to do. I'm on vacation right now for the next one week. So I'm going to carry this around as my everyday MP3 player. I usually use my phone for that, but it also drains the battery. So it's nice to have a second device. So I'll be back in a sec for you guys. It'll be a week for me, though. Okay, so this time it's a bit of a rush for me. So the company Mechen, Mechen, however you want to pronounce that, uh, they actually had asked me if I can get this video out uh, before Black Friday because they're apparently going to have some sort of sale or have these in stock ready to go. So they wanted the video before then. It's currently a couple days before Thanksgiving and I've actually got to go away on a trip. So I need to get this video um, out before because I'm not going to be able to, to edit while I'm traveling, unfortunately. And by the time I get back, it will literally be Thanksgiving Day and I'm going to have family over. So I'm not going to be able to like sit there and edit a bunch of video clips and whatnot. So unfortunately, I was only really able to spend about a week on this guy. I would normally give this like two to three weeks to like really get the ins and outs. But I've reviewed a lot of these portable Android MP3 players. So I think I really only need a couple hours with each one of these units to really get a sense of what their pros and cons are. So I just brought this guy out because this was the last product that I uh, that I reviewed from Mechen. And this is sort of represents their low end. I believe this was actually pretty cheap. It was like somewhere around the 30 or $40 mark. And this was actually a fantastic MP3 player uh, given the price and what its capabilities were and it was obviously built down to a price, but I think this is like a perfect kids MP3, Android MP3 player. Uh, I just want to get that out of the way because this is uh, a, a much, it's a different, it's on the other end of the spectrum from that model. Uh, this is sort of their high-end Android MP3 player, and that's reflected in the price. So this guy is, I believe it's 99 bucks ish It's like just under $100. they are may or may not have been a, a coupon or something to take a little bit off the top of that. But yeah, uh, this is definitely more in competition in line with uh, larger MP3 players. It's much more in line with something like the uh, the Paxu that I reviewed in the past. This is a P5S and uh, this Loran, which I forget the model number off the top of my head. But yeah, obviously in terms of size and capability, these are all very similar. Uh, however, uh, the M11 has... Uh, Oh, sorry, I've been calling it M11. The H11 has, uh, I think, for the most part, it has most of the things that I have on my checklist when I'm looking for an MP3 player that I'm going to use for my personal situation and what I want. Let's actually just turn this on for a sec. There we go. So things that I really like about this, it checks off like all the boxes for me. Uh, it has USB-C on the go, so I can plug a thumb drive or a hard drive directly into this and it can access the memory and I can use that to copy tracks to the SD card. Uh, the transfer speed just over USB though isn't USB 3 or anything, it's USB 2.0 so it's not super fast, it will take a while. And uh, second thing that I really like, you can already see, you can install your own apps. I have a lot of live wallpaper app here installed. And uh, my home screen, it's booting up. We'll give it a second. Anyway, you can see here I installed my own um, live wallpaper in the background there. And everything that I've tried installing, for the most part, works perfectly. There are a couple apps that I couldn't get to run because this is limited to, I think this runs Android 9. And some apps are now starting to come out that won't install on older versions of Android. And that will be an, an ongoing problem as it goes on. I have a feeling uh, Mechen isn't going to issue a firmware update for this guy. Whatever this comes with is probably whatever you're going to have to live with for the rest of this product's life. Uh, other things that I really like, the uh, having an SD card slot. All of these pretty much, as far as I know, have SD cards. Uh, it's a really easy way to, uh, to upgrade the storage, and that's really definitely welcome. Uh, on this model in particular, I tested with up to a 256 gig. I don't have any larger cards, unfortunately, to test, but I I am almost absolutely certain. I would, I would bet my yearly salary that this guy can take a 512 or a one terabyte card. Absolutely no problems. There's no reason why any of these would have like an artificial hardware firmware limit in terms of what SD cards it'll accept. As long as 
Uh, the SD card is functional and it's from like a decent brand. It'll work just fine. Uh, interestingly enough, why is that loading? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, apparently there's a firmware bug. Oh, there we go. It just took a little while. Uh, the clock just popped up there. But yeah, uh, other things I really like, the screen, uh, this is at 50% brightness, is actually significantly brighter than some of the other models that I've panned in the past for having dim screens. By no means is this super bright, but uh, it's definitely usable at its uh, full brightness right there. And it's a good, good deal better than like the average Android MP3 player that I tested in the past. So it does get brighter. The image looks really nice. The viewing angles are fantastic. It's an IPS screen, so better quality. The Wi-Fi connection seems to be a bit spotty. It does have dual band Wi-Fi according to the the, uh, the specifications. However, it seems like you have to be fairly close to the, uh, the router for it to get a strong connection. I'm pretty close to the router right now, so it has full bar coverage. If I go in my basement, uh, it seems to kind of drop out and give like a data connection issues. It'll have to like reconnect every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, I can just go through here. This has Google Play. You can install any app from that. You can sideload apps. Uh, it's fantastic. My trailer and we'll play that. Uh, there is an onboard speaker, which I'm never going to use, but I'll just demo it for you guys how, it, how it'll sound. The processor seems okay all these a lot of these will say they have octa core eight core processors and uh you know usually on the order of like two to four gigs of ram uh but usually the processor is a bottleneck on these i wouldn't really do any heavy processing on these So yeah, it gets decently loud. Definitely not the best speaker, like speaker on a phone I've ever heard, but definitely not the worst either. The uh, resolution on the screen is actually this is a 1080p screen, which is significantly higher than like pretty much almost every other Android MP3 player that I've reviewed so far. So that would kind of make this ideal for watching videos. I have noticed though, at least for streaming, uh, the 60 FPS videos it has a little bit of trouble playing there'll be some stuttering every once in a while it'll it's mostly watchable but every once in a while like especially when you first start the video it'll uh, have some drop frames so uh it's sort of i would watch maybe 1080p 30 or lower content on this guy i, I wouldn't really subject this to any higher resolutions or frame rates it seems the processor is not that uh, sufficient for doing something like that but I really love the screen and like the screen quality itself looks fantastic you can definitely sit here and watch like YouTube videos on here and um, this doesn't have in terms of like the wide vine uh, limitations it seems that this can play any resolution video technically it'll let you select it 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 might stutter and you know take forever loading and not be actually watchable but there's no restrictions in terms of um, to watching higher resolution videos on this. So that's pretty good. There we go. Just go back there. And uh, so yeah, if you wanted to get this, I mean, this sort of isn't really targeted towards kids because of the price. It's it's more expensive. I would tend to, to want to get this for a kid than this. Uh, but if you wanted to get like a teen, a slightly nicer MP3 player and with this, you can actually set parental controls within the software, uh, just so that they could like watch YouTube videos. But you don't, if you don't want to pay for like a cellular contract for like uh, data and whatnot, if they just want to watch videos over Wi-Fi, this will work just fine. The screen looks good. The uh, speaker's decent. Okay, and last but not least, let's look at the audio portion of this. We've looked at the video, the screen, everything else, Wi-Fi. Uh, you generally would get this to listen to music. That's what it's squarely targeted towards. Uh, in terms of listening to music, Bluetooth, obviously, I've had no problems with Bluetooth. I've had this connected. Usually, when I first connect this, there might be like one or two stutters within a couple of seconds, and then that clears out. So it's really only when you first connect to this. I've had some dropouts, but upon listening, I've had this running for like three hours straight. 
uh, onto my Bluetooth headphones and I've had no issues with it after that point. Uh, audio quality on Bluetooth, obviously it's going to be dependent on the audio quality of the Bluetooth headphones themselves. One of the the most questions asked I've get about these Android MP3 players is how do they sound with wired headphones? Because, because not everyone uses Bluetooth headphones still. Uh, so in terms of the wired output, uh, the volume, it gets decently loud. It doesn't get super loud. A lot of these Android MP3 players will save some costs on the audio component tree, like inside the amplifier and the DAC. It sounds okay. I've mostly listened to 320 kbps MP3s on here. You could throw flax on here. The hardware, I, I think, will be the bottleneck. It's it's what will hold it back in terms of like how good it sounds through the headphones. It sounds okay. It gets decently loud, but there will still always be people who wish it got louder. Um, this is definitely maybe a little bit above average compared to the other MP3 Android MP3 players I've reviewed in the past in terms of like the volume level of the headphone output. Yeah, so overall it sounds decent but not great over headphones. Honestly, I would just connect this over um, Bluetooth. And you, the other thing that I maybe you've mentioned before, uh, you can actually access developer options and force this to output higher bitrate Bluetooth connection. Here you go. So options, developer options, and then if you scroll down, it'll be probably grayed out. Uh, oh, here you go. So I can actually select the codec and it'll gray out the ones that aren't applicable. So if you have a, a cheaper pair of headphones that doesn't have the higher, uh, you know, codecs, this won't let you select it, obviously, but on my uh, Sony XM3s, uh, I was able to select, um, you know, APTX HD, and it, it sounded very nice, actually. And it makes sense because the headphones themselves are kind of doing the heavier lifting. They're doing the audio reproduction and output. Um, all of this is just sending the uh, the data that's uh, encoded to a higher bit rate. Uh, so yeah, overall, uh, that is really cool having that option, having uh, the developer option, being able to enable that. Not every Android MP3 player allows you to do that for some reason. Uh, the battery life. I would say this is above average. So in my testing with 320 kbps MP3s, I was noticing about an hour per every maybe about 6 to 7% in battery drop. So that would equate to probably about somewhere around like the 12 to 15 hour mark of runtime. I'm, I'm estimating pretty loosely because also I kept the screen on a lot and I was flipping through tracks a lot. So that, that was consuming quite a bit of battery life. Uh, so I think if you kept the screen off and you just either kept it on shuffle or just linear play and you pl just play through a bunch of tracks in a playlist, I'm pretty sure you could easily get like at least 20 hours of battery life on this guy. Uh, but the way I was using it, I was seeing about probably a little bit less than 15 hours with the way I was listening to music, uh, which is okay. Uh, it's not great. It's I've, I've seen other Android MP3 players that can give you like probably closer to the 25 to 30 hour mark, but they're also missing some of the features that this guy has. This guy has a significantly nicer screen than the ones I'm thinking about. It has a USB-C connection, uh, like USB on the go. Uh, the screen just looks so much better on this than almost every other Android MP3 player I've seen to date. And yeah, uh, for some reason, they're doing the same thing on this model that every other one does. There's no app drawer. So I, I, every app you install has to go on the home screen. Uh, because there's no app drawer, if it didn't put it on the home screen, you couldn't access the app, uh, which is sort of a weird thing to think about. But it is what it is. Uh, for this, every app, I've installed a ton of apps here. Um, there's one app that I couldn't install. It was uh, MX Player. For some reason... Uh, I'm going to need to find an older version of the app because the current version, it'll try to install and then it just errors out and it says it could not be installed. It doesn't give you a particular reason why. So that's one of the things you're going to have to be careful with this guy is not every app is going to work, but chances are you'll be able to go, you can Google repositories of older versions of app and you're probably going to be able to find a version that runs on here. Uh, but one day, because the software support on this is not guaranteed, probably they're not going to issue a firmware update. 
uh, eventually you'll get to a point where apps just stop working and the server side no longer supports the older apps. So that's sort of the world you, we live in and it's something that you're, you'll have to put up with. But as of right now, as I'm reviewing this towards the end of 2023, almost every app I installed works just fine. But yeah, overall, uh, do I think this is worth it? For 99, about 100 bucks. Mm, that's a tough one. I think of all the Android MP3 players, this is clearly the best, but it's also the most expensive. A lot of the ones I'm competing to, for instance, like the uh, Pexu P5S, uh, it's spec-wise not as good as this guy, but it's also, I think it was like 60 to 80 bucks, depending on whether you got the memory card or not. And this guy is a hundred bucks with the memory card, mind you. So it's probably you compete compare this to like eighty bucks to the eighty dollar Pexu P5S to this guy. Does having these added features is it worth the extra twenty bucks in my mind? For me personally, probably. Honestly, I, I but I'm a I would consider myself a power user. Um, the way I would be using this. I'd be using it pretty heavily, so I'd just prefer to have better features. Uh, in fact, actually, if if they are going to improve this, I think having a better processor, making this a little bit snappier would be better. When scrolling through some songs, if you have a lot of tracks in uh, Double Twist, for instance, which is a music app that I'm using, uh, it can sometimes be a little sluggish. And I've noticed if uh, when you turn on, if it's like playing music for a while and the screen is off, when you turn on, sometimes it takes like a second because obviously it's doing some kind of RAM context switching, so it takes a little while for it to, you know, turn on the screen and get usable. Uh, sometimes, not always. And sometimes I've noticed just uh, flicking through songs, uh, it takes a little bit while. Sometimes there'll be a bit of a hitch or a stutter while it's like reading from the SD card. That could just be the uh, the cheaper SD card it came with. So I might actually test this out with like a name brand, like a higher quality SanDisk or something, and see if that fixes it. Uh, but overall, yeah, I think this is a decent, a decent compelling product given the price, but you're going to have to compare it to if you want something higher end, higher end won't necessarily cost that much more than this. You could definitely get like a decent actual high res player for about like 150 to 200. So maybe about 50% to double the cost of this. So you're going to have to weigh that. But for a $100 Android MP3 player, I can pretty easily say that this is the best one that I've reviewed so far. This is the new king. Uh, with the P5S a close second, I can give it some weight because it's actually a little bit cheaper than this guy. So if you don't need the better screen uh, and everything else, then you know the Pexu P5S is still sort of my recommendation for like a more budget model. Uh, but yeah, if, if money is really no option and going up to 100 bucks and you want just the nicer screen, uh, then overall, definitely the, uh, the H11, you could definitely do much worse than that. If you aren't limited by wanting a new device, you can definitely get like a second or third gen, like an older Android phone and just use it as an MP3 player. And you can get used you know, high-end flagship phones for not that much, like if you go back a few generations, and they'll easily be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. And you'll probably be able to get them in the same price, but they will be used devices and no real guarantees on the battery, how long they'll last or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I've rambled on for quite a while. Uh, despite only really playing with this guy for a week, I definitely had a lot of fun with it and uh, some pretty good experiences uh, so yeah, once again, huge thanks to Mechen, Mechen, uh for sending the H11 in for review. If you guys are interested, I will have sales links uh, down below. Like I said, I think they are going to be running some sort of Black Friday special or something like that. So anything that any links they send me or coupon codes or whatever, I will have down below in the description and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.